Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I do love me some R. Lee Ermey. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. Which was released in 2006 from writers Sheldon Turner and David J. Shaw and directed by Jonathan Lebesman. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows the legendary Hewitt family living in Texas. We see originally the birth of Leatherface and then him growing up with his surrogate family. But at the same time, we follow four teens that are trying to make their way across Texas and happen to come across the family. Will any of them survive and what will be left of them? People may not remember what we say here tonight. They sure as shit gonna remember what we do. So in 2003, it's kind of really like the initial wave of horror remakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Text Chainsaw Massacre was one of the first ones, and it was fantastically successful mm. commercially. Yeah, yeah. Critically, yeah, 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 yeah you can yeah. argue it. Uh, but it did amazingly well. I think it had a budget of like 10 million and made over 100 million. And, uh, and so they were like, when's the next one? Yeah. And the producers went, we ain't making another one. Like, that was it. Yeah. yeah. We don't need to make another one. We did everything we wanted to in that one movie. But then everyone was like, well, how come Sheriff Hoyt lost his front teeth? How come this character has no legs? And how did Leatherface become Leatherface? And so they went, hmm, those are some interesting questions. <laughs> well, we'll not make a sequel. Let's make a prequel. Yeah. And uh, and so that was the some of the questions that they wanted to answer. However, they also advertised this film as... Find out the origin story of Leatherface. How did he become the most iconic slasher killer in cinema? Watch this movie and find out. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> I, I didn't bother, actually. No, uh, no, no. But again, I did also look at, like, the, the stars of the film, and I was like, mm, yeah, you know, Arlie Army's in it, but I'm, um, yeah. And I was, who's the director? Oh, who's producing? It was mm. Michael Bay producing. Yeah, he so was. So that was me. That was what I went, nah, <laughs> I'm, I'm done. And I think, it, wasn't he producing the third, the original? He was, yeah, 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 yeah. It was Platinum Dunes that yeah. produced both of these two movies. Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, the director for this, we talked about one of his previous films, actually, uh, Darkness Falls. Oh, yes, uh, yes. I don't think we were very favorable on it. Ah, it was better than House of Wax. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I had some moments, though. Well, yeah, I did have I had some, some moments. moments. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and apparently uh, the director had said that after his experience of Darkness Falls and then after his experience with Rings, which was yeah. a, you know American Rings sequel, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he was having a terrible time in Hollywood. Uh, he was uh, almost, well, he was pretty much done with the business. Yeah. So I'm going to move on. However, he was contacted by, by those producers of this film to go, look, we really like your work. We really like uh, what you've done with Michael Bay in the past. Though we want you for this movie mm. and to give you a chance to show what you can really do. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind this director. I mean, I know he hasn't hit the heights of like Spielberg or Fincher or fucking you know, nope. <laughs> but he's made some movies that I've I've enjoyed. You know, where where people go, oh, Ian, you just got to switch your brain off. There's a couple of films I have switched my brain off, like. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 2014 with fucking Megan Fox. I can easily turn my brain off with that. I'm watching four mutant fucking turtles. It's not fucking hard, okay? You know? Battle of uh, Battle for Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. You know, the... Uh, is it, Alien think, Invasion one, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think it's Aaron Eckhart, is it? I always get Aaron Eckhart and Thomas Jane kind of mixed up. It's Aaron Eckhart and, and Michelle Rodriguez fighting aliens that are invaded. I, I'm pretty sure it, it went up against another... Film. I think it went up against Skyline the same <laughs> right. year. And so Battle of Los Angeles kind of got forgotten because everybody was more impressed by Skyline, but Skyline's not that great. So people were like, who's Aaron Eckhart? And he had to come back with fucking The Dark Knight. You know? Like, like I said, Darkness Falls has its moments. And so the same thing about this film. You know, I'd already seen the remake back in 2003, and this is Gary's kind of first time watching this prequel I, and not even seen the remake. I don't really care for uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. Mm. I think the original movie is a goddamn cinematic masterpiece oh, yeah. in horror. Land so landmark, yeah. I don't really care for any of the other following movies. I've seen two and three and... But, but like you said, back in 2003, Four. it was this wave of yeah. remakes. And so everybody was rushing to the cinema to see all these remakes of all these movies. And I remember a few of them coming out and looking at them going, nah. And then when TCM dropped in the cinema, I was everyone was like, oh, I need to go see it. And I was just like, not really, because 
in my mind, a remake copies all of the markers. So for me, the teens were going to go there. They were going to meet up the family. They were going to get sold up. There was going to be a lot more blood success. A prequel, though, a beginning story, an origin story for Leverface, this is something we've never really seen before. You yeah, know? but I know your usual argument for prequels, which is why bother when you know how it ends. Yes, but this one tweaks that, I find. You know, when you have a prequel and you know that the enemy or the monster is going to survive, then yeah, kill fucking everybody. You know, the thing prequel. <laughs> no point in keeping anybody alive in that motherfucking movie. Kill them all. We know that dog is going to make that fucking run. It don't matter. With this one, though, I mean, it's got some really cool little bits. Well, I have to say, I was I was uh, interested at, right from the get-go. I, uh, to be honest, when, actually, when the film first started, I didn't know whether I was or wasn't into it because right. the, the the soundtrack was pretty cool, but it, it played that, that, that discordant note yeah. from the original movie soundtrack. And I was just like, okay, so at least it sounds like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we are going all the way back to the birth of Leatherface. Yeah. In this uh, this meatpacking factory. Yeah. And it's kind of gruesome. I mean, I do like the, the dirty look atmosphere that this film gives us. Like, we, we said it with our Texas Chainsaw Massacre original uh, review was like that film always makes you feel sweaty and hot feel how and hot grimy it is in Texas, and yeah. horrible and stuff like that and so they tried to kind of I remember they re, they captured it as well in the remake so they tried to recapture it in this one and you've got this woman there at her table you know she's just packing all of this meat it's, it's like she's the only one working there you know yeah and she's complaining about her stomach she needs to go to the bathroom but her boss won't let her and then her waters break and she just starts bleeding on the floor. And then she falls on the floor. She she seems dead right. at one point. And she gives birth to a puppet. <laughs> yeah, it's a puppet. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and then this other lady finds the puppet in the bin. She's like, oh, it's a baby leather face. Yeah. I'm going to take him home. The, the weird thing is, it, it, Arlie Ermey starts the movie off. He's so fucking good. He's one, I, I've got to admit, of all the films I've seen him in, he has to be at least up in my top five favorite actors of all time. Simply because that's not where he started. No. That, that he was just a badass marine, and somebody went, "We should put you in front of a camera." And so he's just a badass marine in front of a fucking camera, and it's the way he says, "Mama, that's one ugly fucking baby." <laughs> that's the ugliest thing I ever saw. And over the credits, we see little snippets of information. You know, um, see the scarred up baby, scarred yeah. up face. Yeah, he's got some kind of weird facial disfigurement, which you know they can't actually take him to the doctors. The time that they're in doesn't really work either. I mean, they're going through what the the forties and fifties because we lead up to like nineteen sixty nine, don't yeah. we? Yeah. Um, when he when Leatherface is basically an adult. So the the opening credits give you the basics that you want in a horror movie. You know, he kills roadkill animals every now and again. You know, he likes to play with horrible body parts in the basement of this house he's mal he's mistreated he can't go to school so he's not educated and so like gary and i discussed this before and and even though it wasn't enough for you i think it i think it is enough just to get the audience in yeah to go, it's you know, to this get, is your basic lever face it's it's a crowd pleaser it's like so this is not a character study this is not a a, a full you know, exploration of how this human became one of the most notorious serial killers in this Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's just like, so we just need to just hit these bullet points. And so, okay, so we've skipped his entire childhood. We've skipped his teens. We've skipped his early adult life. He's now in his like mid to late thirties. Yeah. And we get a sense in this, in this world that um, Texas is shutting down or at least this area that uh, everyone, like, since they closed down the mill, yeah. like, the factories are closing, the, the, the shops are closing, empty. everybody's moved away. So yeah. there's no food, there's no income, there's no jobs, but they've decided to stay. Yeah. And we get the scene again where, where uh, Thomas, is it Thomas? Thomas Tommy? Here, yeah. Is is at the, the slaughterhouse and he's being told by this other underling that he's got to go now and he's gets called an animal. Yeah, I mean, like, 
the, the, I I like the film, but personally, I still have a few problems with the horror movie. So, he is a hulking monstrosity. Yep. He is mahusive, this, this guy. We're going to make Cleaver right now as well. Yeah, I mean, it's Andrew uh, Brynarski uh, playing Thomas Hewitt slash Leatherface. For a second time. Yeah, and he, he, you know, he's just this big hulking mass. How the fuck did this motherfucker get a job? Well, like, like he's did, probably did, very handy at cutting meat. Right, right. Because he's been butchering animals his whole life. Now, I can imagine they didn't go, go for an interview process with him because, you know, back, back, you know, back then in Texas, it obviously wasn't a big thing. But I can imagine that maybe his other family members may have worked at the meatpacking plant. And, you know, that's how he got a job. Oh, yeah, he's handy with a... Well, meat I mean, cleaver. He was born there, I guess. <laughs> well, that's it as well. So they're like, well, we'll just give him a job. But, you know, the, like you said, the boss turns around and goes, this place is condemned. We're closing down. Nobody's working here anymore. What's that? He uses the R word. It's not, it's not me doing it, but he's like, what's that retard to be doing here? And Thomas is there just chopping up. Where the fuck did he get that meat from? I thought this place is condemned. He's just walked into the meat freezer and gone, I'm just going to keep working. And so yeah. then they're like, I mean... Nobody took him down weeks before the condem- condemnation and no, gone, uh, apparently, Thomas, No, you know. because he does. The first guy says, look, remember, we talked about this. We're closing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, then uh, the face turns around and goes, how dare you? Well, he doesn't say anything. He just in, in, intimidates him. Like, how dare you call me that? But yeah. He drops his meat cleaver and walks off anyway. Yeah. But then he walks into the office of the other guy. To the boss, yeah. And brutally sledgehammers him to death. Yeah. He breaks his legs, throws him under the table, breaks the table, and then bumps him on the head. Yeah. Oh, oh, but what's that on the side, Ian? He saw oh. something. Oh, he did indeed. <laughs> and he walks down the road with his saw in hand. And I was like, it's a great shot. It is. But that's a really, really poor origin story of how Leverface found his chainsaw. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, the image is cool, but that's the story? Yeah. That's... That's half arsed, really. Oh, well, I know why they've kind of rushed all of this. Because now we need to spend the next half an hour with our bait. Yeah. Our, our lambs to the slaughter the for this movie. Yeah. I mean, we've we've got uh, Jordana Brewster playing Chrissy. These four teens, they're all in a relationship. Uh, Chrissy and Eric are boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, Bailey and Dean are, are boyfriend and girlfriend. And Eric is uh, playing... Uh, this Vietnam teen, you know, it's 1969. He's already been to Vietnam once and served. He's come back. Now he wants to go back again. And he wants to take his brother Dean with him because it, he thinks it will, like, make him grow up and stuff like that. Well, no, it's the fact that he's been conscripted. He has yeah, to go. Yeah, he, ha- he has to go as well. But at the same time, Dean's playing the kind of character who's like, I'm not going. You know, I, I hear your nightmares. I hear my brother screaming in his nightmares at night. I don't want to go. And so you initially have this conflict that's in the background. It's it's not happened just yet. But you just know it's going to make things awkward. Especially when, like, when Bailey tells Chrissy in the shop, doesn't she? She's mm-hmm. like, look, you know, my boyfriend doesn't want to go. And she's like, but then don't go. Go to Mexico. I don't want my boyfriend going. But it's just the way he is. And, I mean, it is weak. But, I mean, it's your recipe for... Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Exactly. You, you that, need victims. But that's what I was getting frustrated with is like I've eaten this meal before uh, several times and it was only good the first time. And so yeah. watching all these ingredients come together again, I'm like, well, we know how exactly how this is going to go. Now, usually yeah. I'm not yeah. too bothered about that, but I guess it's just something about this particular franchise that it just doesn't appeal to me right. in the same way that maybe many other horror genres or franchises have done and so i was just uh i was just i think i was just mostly disappointed that i would have rather that yes there be teams that are getting killed or being chased around but i just wanted the entire film to be told from the hewitt family perspective yeah yeah yeah. instead of spending all of this time about who's going and who's not going to vietnam and how do they feel about it and where they're going and what their plans are going to be i'm like None of that's really all that interesting. It's, it, it's it, not. It's, at it's least not. it's a, at least it it, it helps just, us identify these characters yeah. and gives us some you know some identifiable traits or personalities to them. But that's not 
what we're here for. Because we know it's a prequel and they're all going to die, I'm like, I don't need to get to know these people. Like, <laughs> But then at the same time, they weren't massively annoying and they did kind of work their characters. I agree. I actually liked the casting 100% in this film. I think everybody was really, really well cast. Yeah. And uh, I think they all did a, a decent enough job as well with the script. Yeah, especially the brothers. I mean, you know, these guys are trying to work the idea that, you know, one, you know, one's a Vietnam war hero basically and his brother is not a coward he just doesn't want to go and deal with all this crap and so you've got that little bit of conflict there which yeah means nothing in the fact that they're in a texas chainsaw mask movie and they're going to get chopped up into tiny little pieces but at least when that happens and gary and i always discuss about this when you're watching a horror movie you kind of have to care for the victims just enough so that when bad things happen to them you go ah oh, i feel bad for them now not Oh, fuck yeah, I don't care about any of your backstory. I just want to see you chopped up into tiny little pieces. Yeah. Well, at the same time that we're following these four teens, we're also following, like we said, the, the beginning with the Hewitt family because, like I said, uh, Leverface has got his saw walking up the road and the, the local sheriff, it's literally one guy left. He's just gone to the Hewitt house and he's picked up Arlie Ermery and he's just like, look, you need to come with me because we think your nephew has killed a man and we're going to have to arrest him. And Arlie's just like, well, you know, he's a little bit misunderstood. I'm like, motherfucker, that's not a misunderstanding. He bludgeoned the guy to fucking death. Whatever you've been teaching him in his childhood, <laughs> it's not fucking good. Um, and they come across Leatherface in the road and the cop gets out and he pulls out his gun and Arlie gets out. Charlie Hewitt gets out, takes the shotgun and shoots the sheriff right in the face. Now, what was really cool is that the sheriff has given us just enough of the dialogue to say, I'm the last bit of law in the town. In fact, I shouldn't even be here. I'm planning on moving away. So once I've gone, there's nothing. And so when he kills the sheriff, you're like, oh, fuck, there's just no law now. Shit, I just killed the whole fucking sheriff's department. What plays in well with, with the original remake from 2003 is that in that one, Charlie is Officer Hoyt, but you don't know that. He's just literally killed Officer Hoyt and he's taken his uniform and he stands there in front of the family, which I really like that shot of Arlie in front of the table with the family around it because Resident Evil 7. Well, you know? original movie. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Resident Evil 7 borrowed from yeah, Texas yeah, 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 Massacre. Yeah, yeah, I know, I get that, I get that. But but I just saw Arlie at the end of the table, and yeah. I'm like, oh, man, that really makes me want to play Resident Evil 7 now with the family in front of Just him. made me want to watch the original movie. I know, but it's also his way, Arlie's way of having his speech and saying, like, look, everybody's left the town, but we're staying here. We're stronger as a family. We've survived for generations, and now... The sheriff has provided us with meals and we're going to, we're never going to go hungry again. And so we're going to feed on the hippies and bikers that travel up and down this road. Yeah. And I do really like that shot of Officer Hoyt slash Charlie getting out of his car and standing in the road with the shotgun as if the next person that comes over the hill is just going to Meals get on it. wheels. Yeah. It's fucking great. <laughs> So we carry on with our teens and they make a stop at this petrol station. Yeah, yeah. Two girls wander inside. They see all the bikers out the back and yeah. they get uncomfortable and they get back in the car and they leave and conversations continue. But then one biker lady starts chasing after them, well, th brandishing the shotgun. Yeah, she's trying to rob them. But at the same time, Dean has set fire to his, his uh, enlisting card which obviously upsets his brother and distracts him. So you've got this whole thing going on. They're being chased by a woman with a double barrel shotgun. There's a fucking burning piece of paper in the middle of the car and he doesn't see the cow. <laughs> I thought that was funny as fuck because as well, because it's like, we're never going to go hungry again. We're going to eat everybody. I'm like, that's fucking Cows, <laughs> right? It's fucking cows. I was gonna say there was a slaughterhouse there. There's gotta been livestock somewhere. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, there's no cow now. No. It's fucking all over the place. Exploded yeah. brilliantly. And, uh, and and when I, when I saw that cow explode, I was like, pause the film. I was like, because that was bloody good. Now I need to find out who did it. I was yeah. like, oh, I'm not surprised. It was Greg Nicotero. Oh, KMB nice. Effects. I'm nice. like, I absolutely adore this man's work. So I was like, at least from here on out, all the gore and horror and splatter is going to look 
fucking awesome. You know, and uh, I'm glad you said that because it does. It uh, does, for me, yeah. it does really yeah. stand out. I've yeah. always loved this dude's work. Yeah. And uh, the way that they built this cow was it was completely made out of fiberglass. He said oh, it's wow. like a bathtub where they just poured buckets and buckets of oh, blood into it. Oh, shit. Then they poured in some blood and, and some chunks of meat and stuff. And so when the car hits it, it just explodes. Oh, nice. And yeah, yeah perfect. <laughs> and I mean, that's another thing going in this film's favour as well is that I don't believe there's any CGI don't think so no I no. don't like for, for, I'm glad you said because I thought the cow was maybe computer no, generated 100% practical you know and, <laughs> and but I was just like man that did look really good especially even with the crash the car the, the, the jeep that the teens are travelling in crashes Chrissy gets fucking thrown completely from the car um, without a single broken bone or deep cut or yeah, anything. Yeah, I know, I know. I, 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 I was just like, are you kidding me? I mean, she might have just been <laughs> thrown safely into a field somewhere. I mean, yeah, I, I, I suppose know. there is a very small chance. Small, small chance. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the two brothers have their injuries. They're cut up. Bailey's got a piece of glass in her, and while the Rob, the the girl the biker chick comes along with the double barrel. She's, she's all up in the brother's face, Eric's face. And she's just like, I'm going to take all your shit. And she sees the police car coming down the road. So there's a little part of you that goes, Oh, they're going to be saved. <laughs> yeah, but we know who's coming. But we know who's fucking coming. Well, she certainly didn't see this coming. Though, oh, did she? Man. Cause she gets wasted. Glad you're here officer. Oh, I just bet you are. He doesn't waste a second. She's like, glad you're here. And he's like, I'm sure you are. Blam! And you're like, <laughs> Arlie, you're the fucking man. But then he's kind I mean, he's still intimidating, but he's like, you kids all right? Yeah. And you're just like, okay. And they're just like, their guard's down. But then the way he starts bossing them around, like, right, get out of the vehicle now. Get yeah. out. Get out now. Yeah. He ends up getting them into the back of his police car. All the while, Chrissy, who is, you know, become conscious and she's looking through the, the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sees this and... Uh, uh, and Eric looks her way just like, no, just stay down. Stay like, there. we're fucked right now, but yeah. just stay out of the way. And so they get carted off in the police car. But uh, Charlie ends up calling his friend, Monty. Like, you yeah. need to come and pick up, clean up this on the road. They drive off. A few seconds later, Monty turns up and he hooks up the car. And Chrissy was just about to grab the gun. But Monty's like, ooh, that's mine now. Yeah. Hooks up the car and then drives her back. And before we realize it, Chrissy's being driven to the house where the others have been taken. Where the torture begins. Yeah. Now, I I, I was really surprised because the, the, the movie's only an hour and a half long. Uh, but, you know, the pacing does just keep going. You know, like, like that little bit at the beginning kind of slowed it down a bit as it just established everybody you know this is Leverface this is Charlie this is the teens but once the crash has happened and they're at the house yeah you're you're immediately right in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre universe you know the two brothers get taken I mean that's very uh highlights all, as well the, the Vietnam stuff as well you know with the two brothers they were heading off to Vietnam and they were going to do some good and fight commies and all this kind of stuff now they're shackled up in, in, in a barn in America, you know, they haven't even left the country and they're being tortured, you know, by people that they're even supposed to be protecting, trying to save America. Um, and so, like, Hoyt, Charlie comes across the burned, uh, the burned army card. And this, this, you can just see that there's a little part of Arlie Armory who's ready to fucking kick the shit out of whoever is trying to avoid the draft because, you know, he's a fighting Marine. But the older brother, Eric, he's just like, oh, it's mine. Because he's trying to protect his younger brother. And so he gets, well, he gets a bit of a beat down. Well, he gets beaten and then he gets his face wrapped in cellophane, the cellophane wrap. Yeah, yeah. And starts suffocating. Yeah. While the other brother's, you know, pleading to release his brother. That knife shot where it goes quickly in the mouth. Oh, yeah. Fucking yeah. Good. Now, yeah. Uh, apparently they did that for real as well. It they actually smothered him. With that cellophane wrap. Fuck. And uh, when he was panicking... Well, the, when they were... Obviously, we see the, the... It's edited in the film, of course. But when they were applying the wrap, they yeah. kept some, they kept a hand there. So when they were wrapping it, they could keep it and then pull the hand away. So he would have some. But the moment the actor breathed in, it didn't matter. Because no, the whole thing like, just yeah. stuck to his face. So they rolled until the actors... Apparently, 
you know, uh, buckled his knees together as a sign to like get me out of here before I die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the actor was like, I want to do my own stunts. I want it to look believable and real and authentic. And yeah, and it does. It really, it's very effective torture. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, you know, Charlie gets Eric uh, out, and he's just like, right, if you can do ten push-ups, you can walk out of here. And then as he's trying to do push-ups, he's fucking just beating him down with that nightstick. And the older brother's just got to keep watching him just keep getting beat down, beat down. And he does make the 10, but fucking Charlie just smacks him even harder, knocks him out, and he goes, I don't think he's fucking going anywhere. And you're like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, it don't look good, does it? Don't no, look good. no, no, but no. At the no. same time, Chrissy has been snooping around and seen some of the events that's going on. Yeah. And she's like, right, well, I need to go and get help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she ends up, you know, sneaking around the car. She almost gets pissed on by Monty. Yeah, yeah. You know, but she eventually escapes back out and uh, she manages to, to hail down a lonely biker. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the girl and the guy bikers we'd seen in the store and t before we'd seen the big group. Yeah. So now that the girlfriend's been taken out and we've seen the boyfriend now, he's just like, where are they? I'm going to save my girl. Right. And uh, he's played by Lee Turkson, um, who plays Holden, who I remember from Oz. Ah. Uh, he played uh, Beecher. The, he was the main character. I was going to say, he kind of did look really familiar. I just couldn't place his face. Well, it just so happens to be that in the entire Tex Chainsaw Massacre franchise, yeah. he would be the very first victim to the chainsaw. He is, yes. But we got, well, I'm jumping ahead, though. Wow, well, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he's got his gun, and he wants to find his biker girlfriend, and he ends up to the house. He's like, I don't give a shit about your college friends or your Vietnam friends. <laughs> I'm going in here to find my biker friend. Yeah. And uh, he ends up shooting Monty, and uh, then he ends up catching... Uh, Charlie off guard and yeah. Charlie leads him upstairs. Yeah, he's just like, show me the girl. So he leads him upstairs to Bailey who's tied to the bed. And he's like, who the fuck's her? And he's like, oh, you want the other one? Oh, you don't want to see her? You don't want to see her. <laughs> yeah. He's got some quite dark comedic it's, lines, doesn't he? Mate, really? I tell you, Arlie Hermy is fucking <laughs> on point as an actor. Yeah. I don't know how oh, he yeah. does it. But then he starts yelling for Tommy! Tommy, we need you up here now. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and we just see uh, Leatherface. I mean, he's already in the middle of torturing Eric at this point. Yeah. He's like, right, yeah, up, up I go, up I go. And he just gets into a fight with Holden, you know, breaks his arms or his wrists as he's wrestling him. Yeah. Chainsaw goes down on the ground. Holden goes down on top of it. Charlie's holding him down on top of the chainsaw. Yeah, yeah. And we know what's coming as we see Leatherface revving that saw. Now, I don't mean to be a stickler, but I don't think that saw should have should have activated. Like I don't I don't know how old saws work. I know that new saws obviously they've got they've got a rev. They've got a rev. And so him pulling the the, the cord and getting it started up, the the the, the saw would have chuggered. Chugged, yeah. It would have chuggered while it cut him. Yeah. But the film plays it so that as soon as he's playing it and you know he's pulling the 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 cord and then as soon as he did the chainsaw just activates and just rips through Holden while he's on the floor and he's in two bits. I mean it looks cool. It does it's just yeah. <laughs> slightly stickler to me where I'm sat there going, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful bastard you <laughs> You fucking asshole Like Gary said, uh uh, Leatherface had already been in the basement and had been torturing uh, Eric and Chrissy had come into the basement and she kind of spoke to him and I think that's kind of where I realised that the gore effects were really quite good because you see her boyfriend he's he's strapped to this fucking table I mean he's the, 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 he's the, nailed the manacles thing. are yeah. being nailed on her so this motherfucker is not going anywhere and you kind of see the panic in her face that she can't get any of this out and he's just like, I'm really cold. I can't feel my arms. And she looks down and, and Leatherface has literally been taking the skin away off. or <laughs> yeah. the skin away from the wrist. So then after he's killed Holden, he comes down with that saw and he's all fucking pissed off and angry. Chrissy's hiding underneath the, the bench where her boyfriend's on. And he just fucking saws, he just sticks the saw right into his gut, right through the table and just saws the boyfriend kind of through the gut. And then cuts his face off. Yeah. And turns his face into a mask. And so, yeah. That, that was the real prize. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Holden was the first death by the saw, but Eric was the first guy to lose his face. Yeah. The lever face to wear the face. It's not great. 
I mean, I still like the original one. Yeah, yeah but that one was TM. like layers and layers of skin and yeah, parts yeah. and yeah. So, but I mean, I this mean, is the origin, so we fresh. get to find his first mask. Yeah, so, yeah. So, okay, that's fine. And it just kind of still looks a bit fresh. Yeah, um, but I, I still think it looks better than most of the other images I've seen of the films that I've not watched. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely <laughs> better than the Matthew McConaughey fucking cross-dressing <laughs> fucking right. leather face. Um, but the younger brother had tried to make a run for it earlier and had been caught in a, a bear trap manacle thing. And so he's outside. Chrissy's come across him and she's just like, I need to go in. I need to find some people. Uh, I need to find your brother and stuff. So when, after her boyfriend's been killed, she goes to leave and go to get the young brother. And that's when she hears Bailey screaming. That's right. And so she's like, I could escape myself right now, but mm. I'm going to go and save my friend. Yeah. I mean, or at least try to. I do love that house. It's yeah. a really big fucking huge house. But there was a bit, um, I've been there, I asked you about this. The mum at the beginning, mm -hmm. and she's walking towards the house. It looked like she was superimposed on that image. I could, I couldn't, Shake it. I, I'll have to show it to you and be like, is that is, is she really there? Yeah, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. Because they got so they got permission or to use the same house that they used in the remake. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they use the same location, the same set, same house. Yeah. So um but when when Chrissy heads upstairs to find Bailey, Bailey's tied to a bed, um Bailey says to her, like, they know you're here. And Hoyt steps out, Charlie steps out and captures her. And at this point, like I said, fucking Uncle Monty had been shot in the leg. And so Hoyt, Charlie's just like, get your ass down here, Thomas. We're going to need to amputate this leg, you know. And so as he's amputating off one of the legs, he accidentally saws the other one. And Arlie's just like, goddamn sloppy work there. You're going to have to saw them both off now. <laughs> Which is why Uncle Monty in 2003, to Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie, is in a wheelchair with no legs. And you're like, ah, oh, he should be fucking dead. <laughs> right? They didn't even cauterize the wound. They didn't. They're, They're just, just going to just wrap it. Pack it in some paper. <laughs> going to wrap it in paper and just keep feeding him fucking human flesh. Well, I guess flesh we'll eat those legs later. <laughs> <laughs> Put him in a that. stew. Oh. I didn't think of that. But don't forget, also, um, Bailey, she also had a near escape as well, didn't she? Mm, yeah. Uh, where she ends up getting the key, she ends up getting in the car, she gets it she started. She did, yeah, she's, yeah. She's driving away and it's like, Thomas, go and get her. Yeah. I'm like, oh no, she's, I was like, she's not going fast enough. I was like, Leatherface is going to go, oh, there's the meat hook. Bang. Ooh, fucking meat Out the door her. she goes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then we're getting set up for the next dinner table scene. Yeah. Where Chrissy and Bailey are sat down with the family. And uh, we also find out now that Bailey's missing all of her teeth. Oh, yes. Yeah. But that doesn't really matter anyway, because now they're just going to, well, cut her throat open. Well, that's it. The younger brother's there as well, and he's absolutely knocked out. So you're not sure if he's still alive or not. But the mum says, or Mama Hewitt, she's just like, release the child. And so, yeah, they just get a pair of scissors and just fucking slice her th Bailey's throat and let her bleed out on the table. I was just like... That's, that's pretty damn harsh. You know, that girl has been through some shit. She was, she, she was a nice character. She wasn't your dumb ass character that did some stupid things. She really tried she to She was practical. a promiscuous blonde character. Though. Oh, yeah, so it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Your ticket's been punched already. She, well, she didn't have sex. She was going to have sex, well, but her boyfriend was distracted. I mean, Charlie is presented as a pretty perverted character. Yeah. And... We don't really know what was going on up in that bedroom, but yeah. the way that she was tied up. Uh, yeah, and he did say he loved her, so there was some... Yeah. Like, maybe, yeah, having her throat slip was a bit of a release. Uh, but, but Chrissy manages to to get out from her chair. She even does the legendary leap out the window yeah, out of the house, yeah, yeah. which is pretty <laughs> badass, and she tries to make a run for it. And Dean wakes up, yeah. Dean wakes up from the table and sees his girlfriends all fucking dead. <laughs> Um, and he comes across Charlie as Charlie is trying to get Thomas to chase after Chrissy. And he gives him a fucking beatdown. Yep. Which yep. On, the, on the front good. porch, he just bashes his head off the off the floor like <laughs> several times. It, isn't he? He's yeah. like, one, oh, that didn't look too good. Two, that was half a one. And then he's just like, I don't, I think, don't you're think you're going, going anywhere. anywhere. <laughs> yeah, he's spitting out his teeth. <laughs> it's so fucking good. Yeah. Uh, Chrissy makes her run to the meatpacking plant, which I was really surprised of how close it had to be. 
to their house. You yeah. know, Leatherface was fucking walking at least an hour, unless he just wandered the roads with a chainsaw. But she she makes her run and she goes in there and hides in there. But obviously, Leatherface knows this place. You know, he was born there. He's born there, basically. <laughs> so he knows the lights to turn on. You know, he knows uh, where to kind of search around. And she, she I, I thought it was kind of funny that she had the same kind of image that her boyfriend had had at the beginning when he'd come out of the pool and he'd had the knife in his mouth and he was talking about dealing with the Viet Cong. Now she's kind of submerged in the blood, yeah. you know, with the knife in hand and she's doing that. And I thought that was a cool callback. Yeah, yeah. And she she, she stabs him a couple of times. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, she's just no way she's going to overpower him. No. But then here comes Dean to the rescue. Yeah. He, uh, man, well, he tries to wrestle Leatherface for a little while and then they're running together and then, well... Well, that face just sticks the chainsaw right through his back, picks him up in the air, and then throws him into the lockers on the side. Oh yeah, and uh, well, he's very dead. He fucking very, very dead. He fucking dead. Yeah, and and she she makes it up into the office, um, finds the dead boss from the beginning of the movie, and which I always thought was really cool that it hasn't been that long. You it's know? been a day or two. It's been yeah. a day or two, like since that guy's been killed. So she manages to find the keys for his car, and she races down. And Leverface is seen racing after her as well. But you're, you, it takes a couple of times to watch it to realize that her escape route is different to his escape route. And she jumps in the car and she bombs it away and she's making the run and she's so happy. I mean, she's traumatized. And much like kind of the original movie, you're thinking, oh, she's fucking going to make it away. You know, a lot of these movies ends with the girl making the run she sees the police lights on the horizon she she's bombing her way towards it yeah and then leatherface sticks her with the chainsaw and she crashes into these the police officer and whoever was pulled over on the yeah. side they go flying off that's so <laughs> fucking awesome like like i remembered the first time i watched it of seeing him just appear in the back of the car and thinking how the fuck did he get there and, <laughs> yep and yet on subsequent viewings it's like he re he, he realized you know, he knew she was going to make it to the car, so he just got to the car first, you know, and, and hid in the back. Now, I know I know it was dark. I know yeah. it was late. Yeah. I know she's been through a lot. Yeah. But Leatherface is a pretty big dude. Yeah. And, how, and, and I, he's carrying nearly a 40-pound chainsaw. Yeah. And I don't understand how he got into the back of the car without breaking in because she had the keys. Because she had the keys. <laughs> and on top of that, so all the way, I was just like, don't believe it, don't believe it, don't believe it. Yeah. And then the fucking mark number four is the fact that he somehow manages to rev the chainsaw, get <laughs> yeah. it started and stab her all within a nanosecond yeah. because it goes from silent to chainsaw going through the seat. And I was like, how? Like, I know it's the end of the movie, but this just feels incredibly rushed. It, and it, I feel like you are insulting my intelligence, filmmakers, because this is fucking atrociously put together. I don't care how good the, the body parts were flying across the road that she crashed into, because I just can't get past this moment. Like, the credits are starting to roll up the screen, and I'm still like, that was terrible. And seriously, like, it just put a huge downer on the end of this film for me. I, I can kind of see that. I've I've seen worse. Oh, I'm just glad I got it out of my system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. I mean, I I get it. But for me, it's 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 the the staple of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie that Leatherface can just do teleport, that. just just yeah. silently rev a chainsaw. I mean, I don't, <laughs> mate. I don't believe it myself. But I've seen him fight fucking. You know, uh, Dennis Hopper of dual <laughs> chainsaws. I've yeah. seen him. I've seen him fight Ken Forey in a river and live or not live, depending on which ending you got. Right. And I've seen him fucking go up with Matthew McConaughey with a remote control. I'm buying it. Okay. <laughs> That's some old bullshit. That's some old bullshit. That is. Yeah. There were some great moments in the film. What were your favourites? Um, a lot of mine revolve around Charlie Hewitt, Arlie Ermey. Uh, he's just really iconic. You know, like Gary said, there's some moments where he's just really dark. You know, and he's not shouting or screaming like you would expect to. He's talking to you like a normal person, but he's looking at you like you're a piece of meat. You know, I, I, I do really like that sequence where uh, Uncle Monty gets his legs chopped off. It's fucking stupid. But Arlie is just on point. He's just like, you got to even that out. And, she, and the mum is, yeah, mum is like, what are you doing for? Balance. I'm like, he's <laughs> never going to fucking stand again. Um, soaring up the biker on the floor is great. 
going down and dealing with Eric and, and chopping him up and then stealing his mask, that's pretty goddamn gory. And and maybe that that ending sequence, you know, yeah, I know I have a bit of issues with prequels because I can't get over it. But I'd, I'd seen this before. So when the original time I, I watched this, my mind was set on the fact that Leatherface was going to survive, you know, against everything that was going to be thrown at him. And so when you see that car just plow into the policeman and the guy against the road and Leatherface gets out and starts making his walk back up the road with the saw... I like that. Like I said, I, I like the imagery. I liked him walking after he'd killed the boss. And I liked Hoyt being stood in the road. The sun blazing down on him. I ain't ever going to fucking Texas. Ever. <laughs> ever. It's too hot. Oh, well, I ain't going to Cornwall <laughs> either. So I don't leave anywhere. Oh, you ain't going anywhere. I don't want to go nowhere. Um, yeah, there wasn't really a single dramatic performance mm. of a scene that I could go. That was the best scene in the film. But there are lots of moments, and like you mentioned, Arlie Army was um, so captivating and so mm. charismatic in mm. his evilness yes. that he was comedic, entertaining, charming, rotten, yeah. vulgar, and hilarious. Yeah. And he was compelling watch, a, com- a, pe- a compelling actor to watch throughout this entire film. So any scene with him in yeah. was immediately elevated by, I think, how much he was enjoying playing this part. Uh, obviously, this is the second time he's played the part as well. So, yeah, he, w- he was having a lot of fun with this. And it really shows. So, any moment with him was great. The cow exploding. Mm. Like, bloody good effect right there. Really good. Um, I love the moment where um, where uh, Charlie's walking into the house and uh, Mama's just like, don't step on my fingers. <laughs> I was like, well, she's not even on the floor. How is he going to step on? Oh, there's yeah, severed there's fingers on the fingers. floor. Yeah. So, okay, that was quite funny. Don't step on Holden splitting, that was fine. Yeah, yeah. good, good. The dinner scene where uh, they, they slice her throat. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was a nasty effect. That looked really good. Yeah. yeah. Brutal. Eric getting sliced up, as you said, you mentioned getting chainsawed, then uh, Dean getting chainsawed, mm. then Chrissy getting chainsawed. Yeah. So, yeah, okay, all the gore and effects were, were really quite. They packed a punch. Yeah. They were very gory, very over the top. You know, and, and I was just like, you know, this it, it is a completely stark contrast to the original film that just went, nah, it's more tense and more believable when it's docu-style, you know, where it, it feels believable and real and raw and it mm. has a heightened tension to all of it, whereas this film just relishes in how good its effects are, yeah. which they are, but it's just, for me, it's just, it's such a departure from what I think makes the first one so good. It's the, yeah, this one is just so different, but it, it does, it doesn't capture the same dread because it has this sort of sly humor to it as well. It's, yeah, yeah. I, I can't really put my finger on it, but it's oh, like there there's some great scenes in it, but there weren't no. I mean, I I could I can't I couldn't really call any of the performances bad, but they were serviceable enough that I was I still cared when the when the teens were getting brutally murdered. Yeah, but uh, there was no. I just wanted to have one scene with the with the teens that I was like, yeah, that scene really really good, but uh, yeah. No. Ian, do you recommend The Beginning? I do recommend Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. Um, like like Gary says, it's not the greatest horror movie ever made. And there may be better ones in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise that people might enjoy over this one. Um, but for me, this gives me just enough to make me go, yes, Leatherface is a character. He's got a back history and he belongs in the you know, the annuals of all the other horror movie characters that we've got. I like watching this one and I like watching, I think it's Jessica Biel who's in the remake. You know, if I'm not in the mood to go all the way back to 1974, because, you know, with the with the original one in the 70s, it just doesn't have the gore. It's got the tension. Yes, it's got the great camera work. Yes, but you know the back history of what the directors are going through. So we're lucky we got what we got there. Um... The more recent movies that have come out after this one, I don't think hit the marks as well as they should do. I mean, that most recent Netflix one where he walked onto a bus and chainsawed a bunch of people. It looks cool, but it didn't. the film didn't have enough substance to make me go, that is my favorite Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. This one's got Arlie Irby in it. He's a fucking 
badass. He's probably more scarier than the motherfucking skin wearing mask motherfucker with the chainsaw. But like I said, when you see those two images of them in the road and the sun's beating down on them, yeah, that's TCM for me. Sure. Yeah, you know, I'm still going to recommend Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Beginning as it's at least worth a watch for horror fans especially, though I am not the biggest fan of this franchise. I found this entry fairly entertaining, but not wholly satisfying. The film had the right ingredients, some great casting, good direction, good cinematography, amazing special and practical effects. It had a tense score and brutal, gory kills with some memorable scenes, so it, it really worked well with what they had. For me though, as a standalone film, it was a little disappointing as I was expecting the beginning to actually explore the Hewitt family in more detail, you know, the transformation or growth of Leatherface into the horror icon he is, and even though Andrew Briniarski was perfect in the role, the story or script was lacking. And the film plays it safe by repeating all of the previous film's beats with random teens lost in Texas getting diced. And it does do that effectively well. I wanted to like this entry more than I do, as the performances and effects were so good. Some interesting characters and the time period, but the ending and the lazy explanation of the beginning made this feel super generic and unnecessary, even though it was shocking in parts and entertaining. So, yeah, it's, I'm really mixed here. But otherwise, I, I think it's at least worth a watch. There are far, far worse Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies out there. <laughs> Witness the birth of fear. Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Beautiful. That's the ugliest thing I ever saw.